You're listening to Podcast BXN, a video game podcast delivering player experience news. Let's go. What's up, guys, and welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 238. War. War never changes. I am one of your hosts, Daniel Prindle, a.k.a. Dan is DTM on Twitter, and I am joined over Discord by the Nintendo aficionado and artist extraordinaire, Roshan Warner, at Roro. Wahoo! Wahoo! Indeed. <laughs> the host of Large Popcorn and video producer at Dual Shockers, Christian Macias at ISO Christian. I should, I should, here, hold on. I should, I shouldn't be leaning back in my chair for this. I should be more attentive. I apologize. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and the master maitre D and fellow Spartan Gage Dempster at Gilbo Biggins. Reporting for service. You're getting ready for dinner service, right? Yes. Right. <laughs> Thank you to everyone watching us live and participating in the chat. Just as a reminder, we are live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube.com slash at podcast PXN and twitch.tv slash podcast PXN as well. The topic of the show this week is... Are we in the golden age of video game adaptations? We got a lot coming. One just dropped today. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, the show always starts with the quick bites. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Glenn, I see you in the chat. Get out of here. We started. We started. The first item in the quick bites uh, there is reports of toxic work culture at Deck Nine Games. Some really disturbing things here. Um, early last year, while working on the next entry in the Life of Sh Life is Strange franchise, a few developers at Deck Nine stumbled upon something that didn't belong in their game: Nazi symbols. Initially, developers noticed a reference to the number 88 and flagged the issue to their bosses, assuming it was an innocent mistake. But in the ensuing weeks, others found more problematic signs and in and in universe labels, such as references to a racist meme, the number 18 and the Hagal rune. Uh, I'm not sure what that those last two things are. So if you guys know, I would love to be educated on that. But uh, as as the number of possible hate symbols mounted, staff grew increasingly concerned that someone was putting these items in their game deliberately as a dog whistle to white supremacists. So some really disturbing things oh. out of uh, Deck Nine here. Yeah. yeah, the runes. The runes are the the like the they look like the the SS. There's a here. Well, no, no, I'm just, I won't show that. Never mind. Yeah, um, no. Very much claimed, uh, you know, previous Nazi affiliated temples now claimed by like alt right stuff. So, yeah, gotcha. sucks to see that like somebody putting this hiding stuff like that in games. It's crazy. Yeah. It shouldn't From be. Deck Go ahead. I think Gage are about to say exactly what I was, was going to say. <laughs> from Deck Nine, it's kind of like really surprising and like exactly, strange. Yeah. yeah, it couldn't be from any company, but like of all the companies, the one that like tries to uh, show off as much diversity in their games as possible, it's like, oh, that's very <laughs> not good. But obviously, it wasn't the entire team. It, it seems like it was a couple of bad apples. But the fact that it was brought up to the people in charge and they still didn't do anything does lead to the the notion that oh maybe it's more than just that that apple right hey man life is strange you know life is strange. god damn it <laughs> yes life is awful and strange sometimes uh and you know what else is awful Singularity 6, the developer of Palia, has confirmed layoffs of around 35% of its staff. Uh, reports of Singularity 6's layoffs emerged Thursday when the workers began posting the new on X slash Twitter and other social media platforms. They included at least one environmental artist, an engineer, and other developers working on Palia. Uh, this comes by way of IGN, by the way, these last two articles. 
No bueno. No more layoffs. No more layoffs. Wasn't it like more like by Embracer as well? Was there? Oh, no. did I miss those? Well, we can't keep up, Dan. I know there's too many. That's it needs to stop all of them. But here we are. And you know what else needs to stop this garbage shit? What the fuck is Activision slash Call of Duty slash Microsoft, whoever the hell is doing this? Uh, what are they doing here? Uh, there is an $80 total pack. You, I guess you have to buy multiple $20 packs or whatever in order to get this. Uh, a Godzilla X-Kong Beast Glove Weapon, which is now available. You cannot equip camos on it. Apparently, that's a big deal but the big deal is that it's fucking $80 uh and we also got information that if you spend $100 or more on the official Call of Duty merch shop you get an exclusive cheetah print skin in Modern Warfare 3 or Warzone since everyone wants to spend $100 to get a fucking skin this is actually dystopia this is so fucking like oh my god and it's crazy it's crazy how far down this well we really are because people are only kind of mildly annoyed by this like people are like oh this is lame but it's like this is crazy 80 dollars for a weapon that also appears to be like one hit kill i don't think there's any other one hit kill melee weapons in this game that's kind of crazy man call of duty's wild and the player base is fucking insane they're so far gone insane show the, the second thing show the second thing too dan target tell us about this Oh, wait. Totally, tell us about this no, totally normal second thing. What? The cheetah skin? Oh, wait, did I miss that? Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I dude, I, dude, I fucking <laughs> spaced. I spaced. <laughs> yeah, okay. Then in that case, I agree with Gage. Yes. Publishers will always try to get away with it. Yeah. Especially Activision. Yeah, because like normally, like for instance, on the Bungie store, if you buy an item, like they'll do a promotion where you buy an item and you get a uh, emblem or whatever. But like they don't say you have to spend a hundred dollars. You just have to buy an any item on the store. <laughs> it's like fucking a hundred dollars for us. No, no. There's there's current discourse uh, about uh, Fortnite specifically going on right now as well. Uh, with people being like, holy shit, the Fortnite inflation is real. And they're comparing what skins are currently being sold at to what they used to be sold at. Uh, and previous skins were like way cheaper. They, you know, they'd come with like, vari like variants that you could edit, um, mix and match stuff, choose a different costume, whatever it may be. They would have a bit more care in how like they were integrated into the game. Where like, specifically like right now, Korra got added but she doesn't use the hang glider, even though they already have like actual hang gliders in the game that like will give you the animation of like the feet up. Like, you know, they're almost flying horizontally. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Core doesn't do that. They just kind of just threw in like a whatever kind of, and this, this, it's the same animation. Uh, and now that the other avatar skins are in there, Aang, Katara, Toph, Beifong, Zuko, uh, they're like, they're, they cost way more money. With no variation, just different, like like less effort put into it. It's like holy shit, it's a lot of money for people, you know, for for less stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's awful. I mean, yeah, inflation, fortflation, in in Fortniteflation, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to the next quick bite. There are images of the Batman game that was based on the Christopher Nolan universe that have been leaked. Uh, we got four images here from IGN's Twitter account. Uh, never before seen images of the Batman game based on the Christopher Nolan movies have been unearthed. The prototype was eventually re retooled into what became Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which that was a legendary pivot because I love Shadow of Mordor. That was the first game. It was a great game. Uh, but the one was Shadow of War, or what was it called? Shadow of War. That was the second one. Yeah, that's the one where you had a you had a grind at the end of that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, these screenshots. I don't know. Obviously, there's a different era, but it looks kind of basic and bland compared to like the Arkham verse that we got. So I'm kind of glad that this didn't come. There was already a Batman Begin Begins game as well. Let yeah. us not forget that one. And I played it, and I loved it at the time. 
Really? It's probably not very good, though. Yeah. Wow. Fair enough. All right. Moving into the next quick bite, we've got uh, Xbox executive Kareem Chowdhury has announced that he's leaving Microsoft after 26 years. Of course, he is the dude who said it's a monster in the Xbox One X announcement when that was announced. So that became kind of a meme. Uh, but he also led important projects such as backwards compatibility and cloud gaming, which pack backwards compatibility, huge. So uh, very, very big deal that uh, he was involved in that. But uh, I guess we'll see where he, where he lands. I don't know. And we'll see where Apple lands as they are opening the App Store to retro game emulation, which is another great way to, you know, sustain games that we may not have had, had access to before. So this is cool. Uh, apparently, Apple is opening their App Store to retro game emulators. Emulators will need to comply with all applicable laws, but it looks like the iPhone is about to get a bunch of game emulators. Tom Warren, thank you. Finally. More like the Android. Am I right? <laughs> well, the, with the, app, the applicable laws thing, will that... How is that, that going to prevent some some things? Like, that's do we know what those things are? That's right. I would imagine it would have to be stuff that they that would be like available in the public domain, right? Like, I don't I don't know how that would work. I guess because like if they can't put Nintendo games on here, right? Like they'll get sued by Nintendo. Right. You ever do you ever going to like flea markets and seeing those? little consoles that would give you like oh 3000 video games in one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's 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 what we're going to play very well could be yeah that's interesting I, that's a really great question row and this article doesn't address it so i do not know what that actually means is it going to be like a is it going to be like a public pawn type thing where it's like oh swim at your own risk like Right. They're going to allow emulation apps, and if somebody makes an app and then you get taken down by like, Nintendo, well, that's your own fault. Why? If you're Nintendo or whoever, Sega, whatever, whoever made games back in the day, like, why wouldn't you team up with someone that's making emulation a, a possibility and say, hey, like, you can totally put this on your store, but we're going to take a cut from it. Like, why, why would they not do that? That seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. It does. They'd rather sue people, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Have we considered the possibility that Nintendo just likes suing people? I think <laughs> Ro might actually be onto something. Just enjoy it at this point. <laughs> that would be so awesome, though. And plus, they they do their own virtual console thing, and that's if they true. Give everybody else the rain, they wouldn't be able to to do that. Sadly, it's a good point. Yep. They want to be able to make the money themselves. Greedy sons yeah. of gun. God damn it. All right. Moving into our next quick bite. Vampire Survivors is officially coming to PS4 and PS5, uh, announced from the studio themselves. Uh, they also said that it's coming this summer. No, really, they said. And we're making a DLC called Operation Guns that's based on Contra. And it's obviously going to be out on Steam, Xbox, and Switch, and mobile on May 9th. So that's exciting. New stuff for Vampire Survivors. Great game. Great game. Very good game. That whole Triple I showcase, uh, full of neat little stuff, eh? Little neat neat things. I didn't see anything else. Is there another thing that what do you mean? I one of the things that is in is in the uh, news of the week. What are you talking cool. about? Is it? Oh. Wait. Which one? <laughs> oh, right, okay, right. okay, okay. No, I see now. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, forget 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 the Pal World Arena trailer. Oh. <laughs> uh Jesus. Pal World Arena. Get back to Pal World. And get no. back. <laughs> no. Christian Christian, you know, 
was all in. Let's spend fucking twenty dollars on a server in the first. Let's month. get a server yeah. going. This guy. Oh hey, I I'm should bit you I, hard. Hold on, I need to you keep talking, Dan. I need to, I need to cancel my server. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. I'm still oh. paying for that. Shit, that's actually incredible. Today's episode is sponsored by Rocket Money. Yeah. <laughs> Pay off your debt quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, our last quick bite. Star Wars Outlaws got a story trailer and has revealed its August 30th release date. Um, I thought that this trailer actually looked somewhat interesting. I, you know, I still want to kind of see the gameplay because we really didn't get a, a look at the gameplay in this. But, I mean, story-wise, it seems somewhat interesting. I don't know. Yeah. You gotta wait two months. June. June. Wait till June. This one definitely looks more interesting than Avatar uh, in terms of narrative. Narrative stuff. Say that much. Indeed. Ed. Although, are those different teams? Like, I know it's the same studio, but different. I would assume different teams, eh? Oh, Avatar yeah. just came out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, duh. Yeah. Massive is pretty massive massive yeah <laughs> road don't shake your head at me <laughs> Jeez, louise <laughs> you're normally the one uh, blotting me in well they 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 were on your side this time that's so i had true. to be the one <laughs> you had to be the bad guy this time <laughs> that's fair all right we're into the street meets where we're gonna run over some some stuff here uh Xbox's summer showcase is getting some serious rumors that are heating up, and we're just going to go over these right now. Uh, Tom Warren on Twitter says, well, I'm sorry, this is from Jeff Grubb on the Xcast, Tom Warren summarizing. He said, I've heard some stuff with Gears 6 might be happening this summer. Yeah, I think I think you're, you're onto something there. Uh, also, from Insider Gaming, someone hold Gage. State of Decay mm -hmm. 3 is being teased for the Xbox showcase, maybe. It might be happening, possibly. It's happening, Daniel, because I said it's happening. It's happening this year. Uh, uh, I, I mean, who, who's really looking forward to State of Decay? Are those games even good? Wow. If it wasn't going to mess up the layout, I, the layout, I actually felt the urge to leave the Discord call, unironically. <laughs> You know, you know, I'm just doing that just to just to go to you, right? I mean, I know, but it's working. Technically speaking, those games are always a little iffy. Technically, you mean the Halo TV show? Yeah. Well, well technically, technically, you're a bitch. Oh wow! <laughs> I was on your side there. What the fuck happened? Christian also just flip flopped today when realizing too. He's everybody's yeah. everyone's everyone's all over the place today. This is chaos. Yeah. Chaos pod. Uh, and speaking of chaos, Call of Duty is also being talked about for the showcase. According to Insider Gaming, who has been speaking with their sources, it's been said that Xbox is gearing up for an announcement on its backwards or back catalog. So Gulf War might not be the only Call of Duty related announcement that we'll be hearing in June as Game Pass games may be announced from Call of Duty, which all of the Call of Duty games are pictured here except for Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. So that's interesting. Maybe maybe not getting Call of Duty Day 1, possibly, if this image is true. Yeah, there's been so uh, much back and forth, though, because wasn't there... There was there's a statement from Phil. There it was. It seemed like everything was coming to Day 1, yeah. That's what it seemed, yeah. So Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, you can see what they do. I think a Call of Duty game dump on Game Pass is all but certain, though. The fact that they haven't done yeah. it already, I feel like they're definitely saving it for a showcase. That's an easy layup to have a, as, as a splash screen. And they're live right now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and I can't wait for that to leak like two days before <laughs> the actual showcase, too. Everyone's going to be like, what? <laughs> we don't condone... We don't condone leaks here. We like the excitement, the surprise. Although that's not a, that's not a surprise. Uh, breaking news. Breaking? Wait, breaking news? I, yeah, I've just submitted my cancellation request oh. for uh, my pal. Yeah, my pal world server. Incredible. They're gonna deny your cancellation request. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, how many months have you been paying for that that you haven't used it? 
Uh, three months, so I'm out 45 smacks. Shit. Oof. That's not bad. Whatever. Whatever. I'll you know I'll write you know off my taxes. I, I was working on these with guides, so. You know what? Yell at yell at Garrett for not reminding you to cancel. That's true. Uh, no, he reminded me. Him <laughs> and Harley. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. So it goes. All right, and then the last bit of piece from the su- summer showcase, uh, The Verge is saying the Xbox game showcase is set to take place on Sunday, June 9th, and Microsoft is currently planning to announce a new Gears of War game, which we already talked about, but will also include release dates for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, Avowed, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and a new Call of Duty, which is surmised to be Gulf War. That's set to debut later this year year so there you go i'm fucking stoked for year six i can't wait to see that game that's gonna be that's gonna be good gonna be good i'm curious to see that too um i'm not i haven't been a huge gears fan for a long time but the coalition is one of those studios that just knows unreal engine so well that i'm kind of like it's almost the same curiosity i have for hellblade where it's like i just want to see somebody with prowess kind of show us what this thing can do so it'll be very excited to see what they've cooked up hold on i have something i have i have a hater comment Uh-oh. hold on no i don't i have a comment that's gonna make me sound like a hater not you so prepare, prepare yourself of course me what are you talking about good joke <laughs> at what point do we like let the past die and like move on to something else well wait a minute they just with gears oh, hold, on, hold on hold on no i know that's what i'm saying it's gonna sound like a hater comment i think this is me like i've never played a gear oh, hold on i take that back i've played multiplayer gears before that's it i never played a campaign i know i know they're i know they're good i know people love marcus right um, but that was a, but that was a long time ago right like that was like years and years that was like more than 10 years ago at what point do we like uh, hold on gears 5 came and went like it, it, in terms of graphics impressive story-wise did it resonate? I'm asking. But also, like, I don't know. At what point do we, like, start building some new flagships? Again, this is, this is making me sound like a hater. I'm just genuinely curious. <laughs> Chaos Pod. Counterpoint. God of War. Yeah, but, like... Oh, what? No, 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 no. That, yeah, that's like, a Sony property. That, like, we like that, Sony that, properties. No, 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 no. Hold on. I, I, do, I, in my new video, I just talked about, like, how, like, all the Sony games are technically the same right now. Right, right. Uh, like that that did go through like some kind of reimagining. Gears is still a third person shooter. I I mean I guess God of War is still, you know, and hold on, fair point Daniel, but do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I do get what you're, you're talking, saying. You're talking, you're talking but also French, like but also Gears 4 completely like the narrative is completely different. Marcus is a side character now. He's not a main character anymore. So they brought in all new characters, new I just want them to complete I, this I, trilogy. I, 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 oh, okay. Yeah, yes, I didn't know the neutrality. Thank you. Yes, I, yes, I, I, yes. I know. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All I'm saying is, Xbox new IP question mark when? That's exciting because that's always exciting. I think I don't know. A contraband question mark? I don't know. What's what's the next <laughs> new Xbox IP? Because like even you do have a. I mean, you have a point, but I, I think that's you can make that argument for movies too, where it's just like everything's kind of a remake or eventually. Uh, a reboot right. um yeah, sure because even even right now what's the new what's the next big new ip from xbox well it's perfect dark but that's also not new that's that's also from mm-hmm. forever ago so i don't know it's it yeah gears 5 i feel like resonated like i was hearing about it a lot uh longer than i thought it would be gears so 5 maybe, is fantastic I maybe the hype's it. been renewed and that's why we're seeing more of it i don't know yeah gears 4 gears 4 are very safe you know, bring back yeah. of the franchise. Gears Five was awesome. Love that game. Uh, let me let me put it this way. Here, Is, me, okay. I I say all this, Daniel, but let it be known, I'm also a Horizon and Ghost of Tsushima hater. Those game, both both of those games, those franchises are pretty boring to me. Right. Also, very new franchises. <laughs> yeah. Horizon Forbidden West, I never finished. I don't need to. All right. Uh, Moving to our last street meet here. 
According to Jeff Grubb, EA Motive was working on a Dead Space 2 remake in concept phase, but was canceled from lackluster sales of the original remake. Uh, they are now Motive is now working on Iron Man and Battlefield series, which supposedly they're working on single player stuff for Battlefield. I guess we'll see what comes from that. Uh, Cap Bailey followed this up with uh, a statement of her own that says EA's statement was, we don't normally comment on rumors, but there is no validity to this story. And then she says, uh, no validity is pretty firm. My own sources tell me that a Dead Space 2 remake was never considered. I don't currently see a strong internal appetite to remake Dead Space 2. And then we got a, another report from Jason Schreier that is now locked behind a paywall for some reason, even though it wasn't when I looked at it earlier. What the frick? Uh, are one free. Apparently. Yeah. But I, think I saw it up on my Twitter. What are you looking for? I was just my Twitter, my, yeah. Huh? So essentially, what Jason said that uh, he heard that the dead dead space something dead space related, like maybe something new. I, I have the quote. If you're looking for yes, it. yes, yes. Oh, where'd he go? P99 uh, says, motive no, motive spent a few months conceiving ideas for a new entry in the series said the people but those plans were never given a green light and fizzled before they could get very far since last summer that team has instead been exploring other ideas while the bulk of the developers who worked on dead space the remake that launched moved to different projects yeah what the fuck ea <laughs> Come on. I love the remake. I was really hoping they would continue the remakes and get to three and completely fucking change three because three's terrible. But here we are. It's going away, I guess. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this was I'm not gonna say obvious, but like playing the Dead Space remake, it's to me it seemed like there was a lot of heart put into that game. Like they it seemed like they really got it. They really understood what made the first one special. So I'm not surprised that the team probably was looking forward to doing, continuing that, I, whether that be a Dead Space 2 remake or Dead Space 2 building off of the reboot and kind of doing their own thing, something. It, it, it seems clear to me that, that, that they probably wanted to do something like that, but uh, EA kind of playing a Square Enix where it didn't quite meet our sales targets. So um, yeah, unfortunately they are now what, a, a support studio for these upcoming projects? Yeah. I, are they support or are they working on something separate? Like, Motive is working on a, sp a single-player Battlefield game? Was that the claim, or supposedly? Also, who was who was working on a single-player Battlefield game just a couple of months ago, and then we learned that they got... It was Ridgeline, right? Ridgeline, yeah. Yeah. Which, the EA dissolved if, that studio. Which, which, if Motive is working on a single-player game now for Battlefield, just, like, what a weird fucking move, it, like... Tough place for, for, for Battlefield to be in right now. Right. To have one nar narrative game canceled, or shelled, I, I suppose, then introduce, and, and then have the Dead Space people be like, no, you're not working on that, you're going to work on a, a, a new single-player Battlefield game. What just happened to the, the one from... Anyway. Well, do we know, do we know that they... It, this might be even shittier, but do we know that the game was actually scrapped itself, or did Ridgeline dissolve, and then EA brought, bring in these other studios to finish that project? Yeah, good point. Good point. It's true, but you know, why the fuck would you let this? I don't know. Fucking, I have a, I have an actual take. Just fucking make Dead Space Two available on stores that aren't like Steam. Put it back on. I mean, at least the PlayStation side. I don't know if it's on Xbox. I'm sure it, it actually might be in Xbox. Yeah, it of course is. it is. Of course it is, because they're, they're Xbox is great for backwards compatibility. We'll see. We'll see. Come on, EA. We love it. I don't know. Uh, moving into the PXN news of the week, guys. Hellblade 2 got a bunch of previews. A bunch of outlets are talking about it, and we got a little bit of a glimpse at it. Um, to go over some of the highlights here, uh, Hellblade 2, this is coming from Tom Warren, looks like it's going to be one of the best-looking Xbox games yet. A true next-gen game built on Unreal Engine 5, but it will only run at 30 frames per second on Xbox Series S and X. Uh, 
And then we got uh, news also that um, co-founder of Ninja Theory, uh, Tamim, uh, shit, Tamim Antoniades? I don't know how to say that. Somebody help me. Antoniades? Nobody else wants to try. Antoniades? Okay. Well, I apologize if that's being butchered, but Tamim, uh, has departured the studio which was uh, a surprise i think to to many people because i think he had already been gone for a while and he just posted a uh, public thing about it after people i guess found out about it and uh, he of course says cats out of the bag yes i have left ninja theory the company i founded and led creatively for 20 years exhausted proud and satisfied i was ready to step off after hellblade but stayed on for two more years to make sure the foundations were in place to fulfill our mission to craft life cha- life-changing art with game-changing tech which you'll see in hellblade 2 very soon i'm forever proud and grateful to the ninjas and i want to i want the world to know ninja theory is safe and sound in the best hands possible Huge shout out to Microsoft for taking care of our baby and letting us grow to become who we are. As for me, whatever I do next, I'll always be a ninja. So that's cool. Uh, looks like he left four years ago, which it could could also like play a bit of a part in why Hellblade Two just took longer to to get to that finish line. When you have the man who's running the studio kind of leave, obviously things have to shift or timelines have to have to change with whatever main project they're working on. So. Yeah, that's crazy. Also, I was watching a, I was watching the skill up um, this week in gaming video, and uh, Ralph did Ralph did have a great point about um, uh, the small worry with uh, Xbox's like uh, uh, flagship, not flagship, but uh, like AAA titles. Uh, a, a lot of the like more recent ones coming out and like and only hitting 30 fps obviously like there's not all of them hi-fi rush runs great you have games like uh redfall uh hellblade what's the other one starfield all all hitting 30 um yeah i don't know that that kind of sucks i would i i I hear you, but I feel like that's a developer decision because like uh, Halo Infinite, for instance, runs 120 frames per second. Like I play that 120 frames per second on my Series X. Like if they wanted this game to be 60 FPS, they could do it. But then they're sacrificing other things. So I I I definitely hear you. But come on, like when we're pro again, it's it goes back to the same like promise of like these both both of these new consoles. Like when we promised so much like next gen technology, and they fail to hit that, it's like okay, what are we buying these boxes for? I, it's also I, a case by case basis though. Because, I know <laughs> it's also a case by case basis though because I feel like some games like we talked about this with uh, I mean. It's kind of the most extreme example to bring up, but like GTA six, right? They're going to want to do Mm. 30 frames per second because you can't go in and add mechanics after the fact, really, right? They want to get the core skeleton of the game as impressive as possible at the, you know, expense of frame rate, because on the next Xbox, it'll play better on, you know, on on future PC hardware, it'll, it'll, you'll get more frames. Like that will come eventually, but what you can't do is change the foundation of a game. Now, there are certain games I think clearly Xbox was just like, just get it out, just get it out. Like Redfall. Is there any reason that a game like Redfall can't run at 60 frames? Right. Not really. Like that game's not that impressive in terms of what it's trying to do. It's a very Starfield. simple concept. Even Starfield to a certain yeah, extent, I one. think, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's probably has to do with creation engine and, and some of the maybe technical debt they have with that engine. But yeah, I mean, it depends on the game. Some games go 30, like Hellblade is a game that I look at from what we've seen and I'm like, okay, I feel like 30 frames was a conscious decision in terms of let's push this thing to the absolute limit and then it'll be sure it'll be 30 frames now, but you know, again, yeah. a year, year or two down the, down the line on new hardware, it'll be, you know, 60 frames, 120, whatever. And, and of course, I, I'm just gabbing. I, I, I'm playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and 30 and have absolutely no problem. I think it's fine, you know, because of the system, right. the complicated systems of the, the AI. I'm like, I, I don't care. 
and uh, and we've talked about before i think on this podcast about how you know 30 fps feels more cinematic and having a game like hellblade that is very story yeah quotes having a game like Stor hellblade that is very story driven and uh has those you know emotional beats and makes you want to feel invested in these characters i feel like 30 frames per second might actually lend to making this a better experience than 60 because i i've i can't remember if i've told this story before but i played the last of us on ps3 at 30 fps loved that game loved the pacing loved everything about it the ambiance played the remastered version on ps4 at 60 frames per second and it felt completely jarring to me like it did not feel right at all so like yeah I, it i was it, with you on that yeah i agree yeah same thing for sure so yeah i like gage said i think it definitely just de depends on a per game basis and completely agree with that all right I really am bringing the chaos today, huh? Just throwing <laughs> shit. Just throwing shit. Just, just to say. Just to speak. That's what we're here for. To speak. The... I haven't talked to all day today, so this is just like... You, you, haven't, I mean? you, haven't, you haven't shed your rogue detective personality yet. It's still You're still in character. You're having a Daniel Day-Lewis moment. Nice. And now is the time for Ro to speak because... Okay. Our next news of the week item, Destiny 2, the final shape, has been given a preview by Bungie. Just, was that today? I can't even remember my days. <laughs> yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Okay. Yeah, uh, it would have been yesterday because yesterday was reset. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, so we got a good look at, at what we're going to get from uh, the new expansion uh, that is coming June 4th row. Uh, they're reportedly also working on Destiny 3, codenamed Payback. Uh, that's apparently been floated out there. Um, and But to circle back to this expansion, we're getting a lot of new stuff with this expansion, including new enemies, a new prismatic subclass, which kind of loosens the reins a bit. And as they mentioned a lot in their stream, they want to break the game with uh, this new subclass and other elements that they're incorporating in, into this expansion. And some of the stuff sounds really cool, bro. Like, uh, I know you and I were going back and forth watching this on the live stream. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, the like they said, like you said that they said they're trying to break the game or just kind of sending it off with a with a bang, which I I think is the the best way to to do it and not you know just have some fun with the last expansion. And yeah, it looks fun. You could you could wield uh I think dark and light subclasses together so you could mix and match the uh abilities found in stasis with gunslinger for for example. Um you could have like a throwing knife while also freezing people, so, stuff like that, which is pretty cool and like Dan said the the new enemies which is we haven't gotten really a new enemy since I don't know the beginning of Destiny 2 because they when we get new enemies in Destiny, they're not really new enemies. They're like a retold, a different very yeah. They're like a yeah, a retold. Like the Taken the, is like the Scorn or the Fallen, actually. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Taken is just like a sludgy version of everybody, and they they've done that for most of the expansions, but now they're actually making a new race of of enemies. So obviously, we're very excited to battle some some new foes. Yeah, that's cool. And those foes include a Grim, which is a flying bat with guns that you can suppress, or I'm sorry, that can suppress you if they get too close. A Husk, which is a melee-focused enemy that sends a deployable enemy toward you unless you hit their weak spot. It's basically like an orb that goes after you. Uh, an Attendant and Weaver, which these are these wield stasis and strand abilities and change the flow of the encounter and force guardians to pay attention to their positioning on the battlefield. Get us some flying bats with guns. Yeah. I thought the Grim looked the coolest too. Yeah. Very cool. This this got me excited. I I'll be honest. I I thought for a quick second, man, do I do I pick this Are up back? in fantasy oh. critic? <laughs> do I, yeah. Oh, you're gonna pick you you feel that confident in it? I don't know. Maybe. Rose it's itching for another counter pick. <laughs> <laughs> I need one more. I need one more. Well, they, oh, he okay. just has to look at your list then, Gage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Got him. And Dan, I always forget you end up playing the campaign stuff, but 
maybe you, uh, yeah. usually you tap out of like the the end game stuff or like with the raids and and whatnot but yeah so i'm assuming you're, you're gonna be jumping back in for the the story missions oh for sure yeah i the, my problem is is i just run out of time you know time yeah i mean it is like an mmo to to grind in so i get it yeah the 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 enemy race like thumbnail where they show all the the big bosses i don't know if you've seen it dan but it it reminds me of uh forsaken where they were the like the force the scorn bosses that you had to go out and and fight it's giving me that vibe where you have to track down all of these bosses i guess and take them out one by one which could be cool but again it's like oh we've done this before i really hope these enemies are <laughs> worth that going sure. and, and doing all that stuff but yeah it, it looks cool it looks cool I'm, a, I'm excited to learn more i see the image that you're talking about i i see what you're yeah meaning. yeah okay I, well yeah Fingers... okay I could, like i've played destiny so much like i could tell what they're going to do with these characters right. which is not super fun to be so predictable but the uh the subclass stuff looked looked fun for sure so that could add some variety to it at least yes and there was rumors also that uh them changing that model to be able to do light and dark together was like supposed to be like a precursor for destiny 3 where they're gonna do oh. away with subclass or classes all together supposedly apparently be awesome. yeah i'd love that so be interesting are they right. gonna go switch to a new engine for Destiny Three? You think? I don't know. They have the same technical debt that Three Four Three is working with with Infinite, so maybe, maybe. But we'll move into our last news of the week item. The Rogue Prince of Persia has been announced. This is the roguelike game coming from Evil Empire that I think we talked about uh, rumors of a few weeks ago. Uh, Evil Empire posted on their Twitter account, surprise, Ubisoft somehow let us take a crack at making a Prince of Persia roguelike. Roguelite. Rogue, the Rogue Prince of Persia will honor the series DNA while adding our own secret sauce, of course, coming to Steam Early Access on May 14th, so pretty soon. There's some There's some more. Uh, there's a little bit of a breakdown. Uh, oh, uh, and... Oh, okay. One of, one of these, like, Twitter conglomerates or whatever, like, the people that, like, have breakdown... Here it is. I think it was Kami? Okami 13, yeah. Uh, the game apparently feels like Dead Cells, has challenging acrobatic platforming, fluid animations, ranged and melee attacks, endless roguelite, restart if you die, earn gold for permanent upgrades, comic-inspired art direction, different melee weapons such as double dagger swords and hammers, a hip-hop-inspired soundtrack, and, yeah, and then as Dan mentioned, Steam Early Access, May 14th. I do like this art style a lot. It looks really cool. Stylized. Me too. And I, I like the the little gameplay tease that we got at the end. I, I didn't love it at first, but as it as it went on, I was like, oh, this this looks pretty cool. It looks pretty fluid. I like the jumping off of the wall uh, stuff that he had to do. Or yeah, it looked cool. Interested to see more. We are now in a weird position where we have had two two D Prince, uh, Prince of Persia's in the same year, with one of them underperforming sales wise mm. i worry I about this one i don't see this one doing better than that one. i don't i don't see it yeah i do not see it doing better i think it will be received critically just as well if not better i think this one speaks to me more on a personal level way more than um god i can't remember what it, the lost crown yeah ended up you know that one didn't end up resonating with me as much as i was hoping it would but this one definitely seems like it, it will be uh but i wrote down some notes underneath this and i wrote down the children of the sun analogy this is a game that got lauded critically especially for its art style and its gameplay being like this is like one of the best indies of the year however however the game peaked at 208 players on launch day yesterday uh so it is on track to sell uh, somewhere around 5,000 units in its first week, uh, below expectations for Devolver, supposedly. Devolver did uh, 
respond and say uh, it is exceeding first week uh, predictions uh, and it's on its way to success, but there's there's no co- concrete numbers as of yet. All this to say, still kind of a tough place for indies to be in. Granted, even though like this game is exciting, will it perform well? Who knows? It's kind of a precarious spot. I also wrote down, uh, it is tough to market games in the age of the algorithm. A lot of the responses for how games under underperform is like, well, there was no like ads for it. But like, really, you know, what do ads mean in our day and age? Like, like if if we're not getting like sponsored ads popping up in between scrolling in like Twitter or TikTok, I don't know where people will see it. And it's it's kind of like the rare case where a game will take off. And I'm look, I'm thinking about Content Warning, which you know that game April Fool's Day. That game releases for free uh, and is lucky enough to like go viral because the game is just funny and co-op and it, it has a little audience because of its its mainstay with, with like TikTok videos. For other games like a roguelite Prince of Persia game, will that have the same cachet? Probably not. Yeah, I hope this game does well because it, it seems very cool from uh, an indie developer, so... It doesn't. I think I agree with you in terms of Lost Crown. Like the, it has that Ubisoft. Like at the end of the day, Ubisoft made made that game. Like you know, they put the the coat of paint on it. Where it, you look at it and you're like, okay, this is a Ubisoft game, not a you know, right? Insert indie studio game. I don't know. I'm excited though. Yeah. I wish it, I. I don't know. Steam Early Access stuff has me less excited. Kind of wish it was like, you know. Well, I, I'll just stop talking. Who knows? I, it just feels like a lot of games are recently coming out to Steam Early Access. And I kind, of, I kind of, I end up preferring to just wait for the 1.0 release. But Oh, like Sons of the Forest 1.0. I talk about that game once a week. I'm ready to go whenever. <laughs> I am ready to go whenever. Uh, and we. But, but also like. We'll probably end up checking out uh, No Rest for the Wicked, I'm sure. And oh, early yeah. access, maybe. Right. You know? Yeah. I definitely will be. I Hades definitely. 2, I'll be there. Hades 2, day one. Indeed. Let's check out our fantasy draft check in from Fantasy Critic. We have one pickup here from Christian Macias' team, Eternal Rose Software. He has acquired nine souls with a bid of five dollars getting in there with the cheap bids that's the minimum yes yeah uh nine soul nine souls got a release date and i promptly went and picked it up so i figured maybe maybe one person else would pick it up and that'd be row but i kind of just bet that he wouldn't do it so five bucks there you go you bet correctly i had a feeling this one will do pretty good can you imagine if this is the year that Silk Song finally releases and it's me who gets the points for it. <clears throat> I had it all year last year, man. Nothing happened. That sucks. <laughs> That's true. We're fucking already to April and we've heard nothing about that release date. So you got a got an Xbox page. I don't know. Yeah. We talked about last week. That's that's nothing. It already had a page on every other thing. But now it's got one on Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did also get rated in February. Uh, in case anyone forgot, here's the breakdown. Rose in first with 88 points. Christian's in second with 38 points. I'm in third with 31 points. And Gage is in. That's right. You guessed it. Dead last <laughs> with 17 <laughs> points. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, there's still a I, lot of... I will say this, though. Rose stole Stellar Blade, and it turns out like that one might, might be uh, a case where that helps all of us, eh? Mm. And then he okay. counterpicked Call of Duty. I'm I'm just telling you guys now. I'm running you guys. The race is tighter than it seems. Is Stellar Blade in really is it in early access right now? No, it was just demo. Oh, it comes... oh it's just a demo. Okay. I thought it came out with the amount of hype uh, I saw on my feed. Comes out... That's right. Hype. It's gonna be great. <laughs> hype. You mean discourse? <laughs> yeah. People don't people don't like main course more like. But... Nice. <laughs> wow. Hey, that was good. People should like butts. 
Uh, I agree. You know? That is a that's a statement I can get behind. <laughs> Literally get behind. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Oh Jesus. Uh we're moving into what you got for me, Daniel. What did you forget last week? Well, Dan, I forgot. Played up, which I also played this week. And man, have we been serving up some food. That game is fucking insane. The amount of stress that I've gained in my life from that game just fucking Dan, we need seven pizzas. That fucking can't work any quicker. I'm getting pizzas out as quickly as I can. That is it's it's ten times what overcooked was Damn. for it's pressure. That's crazy you feel that way. Good though. I, it's I feel so like it, I feel good. like it's not stressful. I feel like it's it's almost meditative. Man. It's both. Like you kind of get into like a zone. You get into this weird like <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when I used to play a guitar hero on the controller at like higher difficulties and you would just sort of sit there oh you're getting just yeah. right mm, and that's true. that's what i feel like happens in played up right i'm sitting there I'm s- nobody's talking there's four of us in the lobby and it's dead quiet that that just yeah. shows great teamwork you know we don't even have to sure. communicate yeah you know? for sure we were killing it yeah best thing about, best thing about this game is the is I, I never felt like Overcooked had the right amount of strategy. Like it's it's a bit it's a bit too chaotic. Like and that's the that's the fun fun of it. I like that that is the appeal. To me that that causes me what damn somewhat like the amount of stress. Like Overcooked to me never feels like an actual good time. It's funny, but I'm not having like a good time necessarily. The the strategy for played up is like legit excellent. You get to set up your kitchen, your cleaning, your your tables like anywhere you want in this like like uh, procedurally generated i don't know like this one of these various layouts and then go from there choose right. what to upgrade choose like how, how, what the flow is going to be like and that level of strategy like really does change the game indeed stay tuned for more played up i'm sure anyways ro what she got for me nothing <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Still nothing. You're cooking some videos up though. Yeah, I I am. <laughs> uh, and I, I and I, last week I said that one will require me to to play a game, so eventually I'll be able to say something. Naturally that video is last and in priority. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to that video next year, but I will tell you when I do play it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh god. We wait with when we get anticipation. To, oh. When we get to PXN's uh top game of 2024, Rose gonna talk about the let's plays that he saw. People tweet about. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I watched Spider Man meet me last year. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. That's alright, you didn't miss much. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I think I still think we were a little too harsh on it. I enjoyed it. Spider Spider Mid. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what you got for me? Uh, first things first, I put out a video game murder mystery YouTube video. Uh, that one was fun. Uh, played. Who up. did it? Spoil Dragons. it. Spoil huh? it. Spoil it. Who who killed who killed him? Who killed video us. games? It was all of us. It was podcast PXN. We killed him. Is gaming back? <laughs> no, it's dead. We killed him. <laughs> uh, more Dragons Dogma Two. Awesome game. I was thinking. I was thinking about that game. Is like obfuscation. Uh, like the way it like makes players think about how to approach quests and combat. Gets more and more fun. Uh, and then I got to Batal, and I'm like, Nah, this is hard. But I I I I say that, but like. I did it to myself. I decided to change vocations the first time I walked into Batal. So I'm like going in there with like no core skills and from like this new class and, right, and new right. abilities. I'm like, I'm getting my shit rocked with the, with the the what what is it called the uh that that like magic spear hand class is pretty fucking sick. It's cool. I I I haven't. I don't know. I, I I'm so addicted to DPS in that game. I I tried the mystic spear hand and it looks cool, but. I haven't found a way to utilize it yet, so I I kind of put I, it on the back burner. I will say this, Gage. I I was like, I'm gonna try out Thief, and I 
went from one city to another city, which was like, and the way this game plays out is a full gameplay session. You know, I don't get, I mean, right. get to do a quest. I'm just going from one place to another. But that is the gameplay. And I went from like level one thief to like uh, level five, maybe. Right. The middle. It's so it's either, it's either right in the middle or the one right after. Right. Just in this one in this one walk. And I was like, all right, that's enough thief. I didn't get to fucking put anything on. What? Like, Dude, I, yes. I, haven't even, I haven't even tried the thief proper. That's God, crazy. Let's try something, uh, let's try something his... else. Yeah, no, his special abilities are crazy. Uh, and then I'm also playing for a new video, uh, a little, a little EA game. I want you guys to guess. Uh, a little, a little dice, dice game from 2008. Oh, can you guess? Mirror's Edge. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Wow. Replaying, Mir replaying Mirror's Edge. A lot of fun. Hell yeah. Game still holds up, but we knew this. Did you play is the finals kind of expired by uh, Mirror's Edge in terms of its aesthetic? Hey, good point. So there might be something there. Did you play Mirror's Edge Catalyst? I never did. Did you? No, I didn't either. But <laughs> nobody, I don't <laughs> think anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody? Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. funny because if you're like me, you play Mirror's Edge, you're like, hey, this is kind of cool. And then the sequel comes out and everyone just kind of unanimously decides, eh, mm -hmm. I'll skip it. Well, I heard it was like not as good. Yeah, it's true. All right, Gage, what you got for me? A whole lot of plate up, and uh, and that's pretty well hey, it. Hey, hold on. No, hold on. we also checked out uh, content warning. You and I, I was getting to that. I was gonna oh, get to bad. that. <laughs> um, everything these guys said about plate up, though. I mean, fantastic game, fantastic indie game. If you want to, you know, support some good people. And have some fun in your life with some friends. Highly recommend Played Up. Very good. Like Christian said, the thing with Overcooked is that it's it almost seems like it's kind of like a gimmicky sort of party game where it's like, what, the first level, maybe the first two levels are kind of normal. And after that, it just starts throwing things at you. The arena splits in half or like crazy stuff starts happening. Whereas Play Up is kind of like, you're very much in control somewhat of your system. And it's very much how efficient of a system can you make? before you guys ultimately fail. So, highly recommend Played Up. Very good stuff. And then, yes, Christian and I checked out Content Warning. I did not know about this game at all. It was not on my radar. Christian told us to download it. I, I downloaded it. I'm a simple man. Christian says jump. I say how high. I downloaded it. We played it. And uh, it's good, good fun. It's good fun. Very, very cool stuff. It's weird that, like, when it comes to, like, tech innovative tech in video games it seems like the dial has shifted where it's almost like indie games are coming up with these really interesting gameplay mechanic ideas and innovating in that space whereas in the AAA space it just seems to be like oh look at how much more photorealistic the graphics are which is also cool and also impressive but interesting how the dial seems to have shifted for indie games to be kind of spearheading a lot of these really cool innovative ideas so content warning played up i'm on my indie streak and uh, I'm feeling good about it. Having a good time. Also the finals, which is also technically an indie game. So I want to check out Concept Warning with a with a crew of four. Yes. Which which Garrett has as well. I, I checked it out with him as as well. That game opens up once you make it past the initial day three. Like the place you explore changes. Right. And obviously you make more money to make the game more interesting with like the equipment that you buy. I don't think it's as good as Lethal Company, but there's a level of jank and weight to the animations that I think makes this game like shine. And it's very cool that if, if you can just press F5 and capture your footage back from the day in case you die, which is the case for Gage and I. <laughs> but it's it's so cool getting to see your footage back and seeing like the characters interact like with the weightiness of the camera. Like it, it's just it's just funny, right? <laughs> Even if I don't play it for like, if I do like one more gameplay session, I will still have like leave that game being like that was a good fun. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's especially funny, Ro, when you and I watch it back and we're like, this man was imitating us in in these videos. You know what the fuck's going on here? Terrible. A great excuse to make fun of your friends. Absolutely. <laughs> Incredible. Probably fuck. Probably. <laughs> Probably fuck. <laughs> Oh, God. There was the moments too when you like zoom in with the camera for like you know the added emphasis, and I'm just like, "Fuck you!" 
<laughs> Fucking asshole. That, here with Finally, all my Halo games. Toxic slip. <laughs> yeah. I was genuinely laughing at those clips, though. Those are good, good clips. Good Look, all I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say is it's worth playing that game as an appetizer for when we get down to the main course, which is played up. Right. Right. Eat up, played up. We're gonna make a game that's called Eat Up. And we're gonna just eat the food that is prepared for us <laughs> instead of played. Just kidding. All right, moving in to the topic of the show. Uh, are we in the golden age of video game adaptations? I don't know. Are we? But before we go over some of that, uh. Fallout on Prime's release date, guys. Oh, that's coming out, you know, tomorrow, right? It's supposed to come out tomorrow. Originally, it was supposed to come out on uh, the 12th. They pulled it back a day to get it to the 11th. Wait. Yeah, I did the bit. It's being brought forward one more day again. It is available as of 16 minutes ago, guys. It is officially out now. Here it is. Everyone liked that. <laughs> we just shadow dropped follow for you guys. Here we on did. Podcast EXN. That's an exclusive world ex live right now. Wait, someone say world exclusive in the Jeff Keeley voice. God. Ooh, Will premiere? Oh, <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> suck it, Jeff. We got a word. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, also, we have information that season two of Fallout on Prime is reportedly already greenlit with expenditures already being detailed in California. Um, so they're saying that uh, it will contribute approximately $153 million in qualified expenditures to the state of California uh, mm -hmm. for se a potential season two, but it's seemingly going to happen. Um, so already this show is getting a bunch of success. We've already seen a bunch of reviews from people come out today who have already gotten an early screening of it, and it has been very positive thus far. Uh, obviously, Jonathan Nolan seems to have cooked here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he did. We'll I see. had faith. <laughs> Christian's the final judge. Are you, does that mean you're going to watch, Christian? Probably not. Oh, I mean, hold on. Gonna... That's I, I ridiculous. Did that, That's I, I ridiculous. Did say, I did say if you guys wanted to do like a, a, a like a topic of the show, like the first two episodes, that that could be fun to do. When in, in which case, I will I will watch, you know, because I'm doing it for for the for the show. Uh, but otherwise, I have zero interest. Yeah, absolutely zero interest. <sighs> Fucking this world is amazing. And I, look, I look, because because you ask, are we in the golden age of video game adaptations? I think no is the answer because. I'm being serious. Like, I think the answer is no. Oh, I know you're uh, being serious. <laughs> because they're they're not good. Are they good adaptations? I, I think no is the answer. Like it's interesting. interesting. In terms of faith in terms of faithful adaptations, I, I like I, I think of Patrick Williams' video essay on like the Mario movie. What makes that a good adaptation? It's 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 not. It's 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 not really an adaptation of anything like that that movie in terms of like the source material is is not one to one obviously is it a good movie i, I wouldn't even claim go that far the last of us in terms of adaptation from game to 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 show is a worse product a worse a worse piece of storytelling than the actual game right so we're put in a weird position we're like are they good adaptations well of the source material the answer is going to be no it's but in terms of like it, wait, and in terms of like tv in terms of tv the answer is very clearly no when you have like legitimate shows like expats or Shogun being like, this is what quality television looks like. And when you compare it to other different kinds of like these kinds of shows, they're like, well, they're they're good. They're 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 entertainment, they're enjoyable, sure. But are they like quality fucking pieces of media? I, I I'm not entirely convinced. This is interesting. I hard disagree, but before we get into it. Do you want to finish off these bullet points or do we want to just jump right into well the rest of the we want to get into the octagon the rest of the bullet points i was just going to cover like ever all the adaptations and i think christian added these as well uh, so 
just to go over them, so some of them we've talked about already, but Arcane, Fallout, of course, is out now. Sonic, Mario, The Last of Us, Halo. Yeah, I put it in here, whatever. Uh, forget Borderlands. Like Borderlands Christian. <laughs> Did you put that there? Fucking you didn't put it in. And like that that movie is coming out. You didn't put like that's that's a massive well no 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 yeah video game adaptation that's coming out this year. Yes. I was meaning to only put the stuff in here that was like seemingly good. That was like, why. okay, okay. But your 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 claim is are we in the video game golden age? Seemingly that's good. That's the discussion we, prompt. That's the discussion have, prompt. We, we have to ask, is is right. that going to be good? Is the Borderlands movie going to be good? No, I don't because yeah. if we're, because we're from the if we're from the if we were in the golden age, then that should be a fucking slam dunk, right? Well, I don't know about that. I don't think every Hold single on. piece of media has. Well, well, let's we'll get to that in a second. Hang on. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> Dredge, which you kindly reminded me of, is getting an <laughs> adaptation at Story Kitchen, uh, which this is based on an indie video game. Thank you, thank you for adding that. Uh, also, the production studio is also working on a Sifu movie with Derek Kolstad, who is the writer of the John Wick series. Very cool. And we've got we've got all those PlayStation ones too. Go, go, well, I guess there'll be TV shows, but oh like, yes, Horizon, God, of God of War. Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Horizon. Yeah, uh, and then they're also doing a Vampire Survivors animation series. Thank you. I did not know that yeah. either. Story Kitchen working working hard to do uh, to bring three indie games to multimedia format. All right, so circling back here, <laughs> my question would be like, for it to be a golden age, does every single piece of media that comes out of like video game adaptations have to be like that, top? No, that is a no, bl- absolutely that's a, that's not. A, Dan, that is a blockbuster fucking movie coming to theaters. If that one isn't going to be good, then what would make this the golden age? Hold on, I'm I working mean, on the it. good you, stuff. Yeah. Here we go. But this is wait. a blockbuster movie coming to theaters. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't if, seen anyone hyped about this movie, so I don't know. That's my point. That's my point. If not well, even the, like the the place where like you watch the biggest fucking experiences were like made for like the widest audiences possible to experience a format like to 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 watch stories like in in a in a medium that is like a. Uh, uh, Sorry, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm like, I'm trying to paint cinema as like this, like sanct, sanctitude place we all go to watch like transcendent stories. It's obviously not the case, but like, if not even the movies are are uh, like critically received well, what would make this the golden age? I'm about to lay it down uh, for you. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> I mean, I... and the answer can't be streaming, streaming, uh, streaming properties. Like, it can't be that. It cannot be streaming because that's not? not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Well, hold it. Hold your horses. Whoa. Hold your horses. Um, wait, wait, I got one more thing to go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Dave. Oh, I don't know what I. What would I, I'm just confused. You... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, bro. So when you said, I know we didn't like the Mario movie. I, I think a lot of people didn't like the Mario movie, but what would make it a good adaptation of the Mario movie like I think the world was well realized sure. the characters the animation all of that represented Mario really well as opposed to like what would be a good one like especially how the game doesn't have yeah as and I was against it at first like with Chris Pratt being the voice actor but it's like as time went on it's like how do you even adapt this properly right right yeah, use, you, being what use, it was. The vi- use the music and not needle drops would be one thing I would I would right. say but I feel like that's nitpicking a little bit yeah and and yeah, yes, that and that is fair. Like I I don't know I I think it was I I guess we could just disagree on that, but I I think the I think the Mario movie was really well done, and I the the to for what it was, of course it could have been better. There's a lot of things that could have been better about it, but I just fail to. I don't know. I don't know what they could have done for it to be. Besides the music, I guess, and a better story. But like the Mario games don't have this. It's just like the Mario just, games don't have a story. You're right. Exactly. I don't know how you like exactly. you say that's a bad right. video game adaptation because it didn't do what the games do. But like, what do the games do that the movie could have done? You know what I mean? Oh. Like, how is it a bad adaptation of the video game? I don't think it is. I think it's a. I think it's a good adaptation, and that's my spicy take that I know is going to give Christian heartburn. But like, 
Hold, hold, hold on. First of all, I'm I'm happy to finally hear Rose speak on this episode. I've been waiting. I've been waiting this whole time. I mi- I missed hearing this man's takes. Second, like one of your points was a good story. What would make yeah. this better? A good story. Is that not admitting? Like, granted, it was re- received well. Like uh-huh. people enjoyed that movie. There's going to be sequels. We'll watch them. But if not even like the best video game game adaptations are getting good stories, are we really in the golden age when we have Sony producers making this Legend of Zelda movie? Is that the golden age? The movie hasn't come out. You we can't. You can't, use it. It. Yeah. you can't use a movie Wait, that yes, hasn't you come can. out. No, yes, you cannot. You can. Yes, yes, you can. No, you can, because you. Yes, you can because you look at the history of the producers and what kinds of movies they produce That's and how they re- and how they're received and how are they right. received all poorly. Right. So there's there's some element of truth to that. Like if you were to look at like before Madam Web came out, if you were to look at the writers for that and see what they did recently, you'd be like, okay, this movie's probably gonna be bad. And it came out and it was bad. But here's <laughs> here's the problem I have with with your. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here a little bit, right? The golden age of television. Would you would you dispute that at some point between 1995 and now that there was a universally agreed upon? golden age of television if you want to say it's already ended then that's something you could say but like that's kind of a thing that's been thrown around right that that at some point between 1995 and now that the golden age of television has been used a lot there's still bad tv shows that that's never changed right it just means that we're getting to an area where the medium is elevated to where it's never been before so before you say no we're not in the golden age of video game adaptations let's go down a trip down memory lane okay (laughs) We're gonna talk about we're gonna let's let's bring up some movies like I don't know, uh Angelina Jolie's Laura Croft Tomb Later Tomb Raider, um Paul W.S. <laughs> yeah, Anderson's movie. Resident Evil movies. Uh we've got the Warcraft movie, which is 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. You've got the, the Prince of Persia with Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Remember Gyllenhaal. that movie? Yeah. That the, was fucking yeah. awful. The original that was Mario. Garbage. That with- the, other movie. With yeah. <laughs> the original Mario movie, yeah. actually, right? I found out in this in this video essay, uh, was the, the point that was going to make it a good adaptation was cut by the studios. I'm not Enti- surprised en- me. En- entirely changed like my perspective on that movie. Would it still right. make it for a good movie? The answer is of course still no. But would it give it context? Holy shit, it like changed everything for me. Wait, what was right. what was it that was cut? Uh the ending was was different, where like it's it's the other way around, where the events in this movie actually inspired the game, and it's the games are bad adaptations of the events of the movie. Like there's like a whole commentary at the end of like adaptations of what makes them good or bad that the studio decided to just cut. I was like, huh, that's at least inter- that's at least interesting. Is right. it gonna make for a good movie? The answer is of course no. But like that's it's at least swinging for something to say. My point is this: Gage is you guys are all right because well, hold in on, terms me- of like hold on, no hold on. In terms of everything you're saying, yes, the movies we're getting now are better than we used to get. Of course, I'm not denying that. All, all even the, the shows are better. Are we in the golden age? No. Are we uh, like getting there soon? I would say yes. Hold on, you 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 you've you've cut me off at the landing here. Okay, we've got so we've got all those movies. We've remember Doom in 2005, 18 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Hitman 18. in 2007 with Timmy Oliphant. 16% on Rotten Tomatoes. There is I completely forgot about this. There is an Alone in the Dark movie starring Christian Slater. It has a 1% on oh, Rotten Tomatoes one. in 2005. One. Okay, and now we let's look at some <laughs> recent ones, right? The Last of Us, which you which you said is it a, is it an inferior product to the game? Absolutely, because the game is lightning in the bottle. Is it right. a faithful a- adaptation? You're out of your fucking mind. Of course it is. That is a what I like to call. I was thinking about this because I was thinking about if uh, if I actually was thinking about this a couple weeks ago. Um, if we were to have a discussion about video game adaptations, no, I, I said, is it a good adaptation? No, not it was. Is it faithful? It's a good. I would say it's exactly a good adaptation. And this is what my this is what my criteria for a good adaptation is. It's not necessary because you can get into the minutia and you can play semantics all day long about what's a one for one adaptation and what's faithful and what isn't faithful. To me, I was think I was sit- sitting on it, ruminating, and I think what I like is a beat for beat adaptation, a, a adaptation that hits all the same beats of the original story that it's supposed to, and it hits in the same way. And I think The Last of Us is what I would consider to be a very faithful beat-for-beat adaptation. And 
so uh, we di- like Daniel and I talk about the Halo show. We disagree on a lot of things, and like one of the main things is like, is the adaptation for you, the person who's already played the thing, or is it for the people that haven't? And where your needle swings on that will depend on will change what you want from the show. So as somebody and Ro and I talk about this a lot, and we agree on this. As somebody who wants to share these stories with people that don't play video games. Personally, I like to lean towards an adaptation that is more one for one or beat for beat because then I can kind of bring my mom in and be like, hey, here's this, you know, 13 hour game that you were never going to fucking play, but now it's in an eight hour series. So The Last of Us is 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, 89% audience score. You have something like Edge Runners, not for me. I tried, not for me. But that was great. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, 95% audience score. And especially when we talk about gamers and how gamers like to, you know, review bomb and all this stuff, like that's kind of impressive. Fallout, no, no user score yet. Ninety-three percent Rotten Tomatoes. But Arcane, uh, and then finally Arcane, a hundred percent critic score, ninety-six percent audience score. Which for a video game property whose main characters are pink and blue-haired women, kind of impressive. That <laughs> obviously resonated with a lot of people. Really, which, really which impressive. One? Arcane. That's Arcane. audience score. So, do I think we're in the golden age of video games adaptations? Absolutely, I do. People are finally starting to understand what makes these properties special, and they're bringing it to a completely different medium and still managing to impact people in huge ways that we get scores like this. And especially when you look at how things used to be with all this, with all the examples I brought up and all the, how we were eating slop for so long, me included. I, I watched that Doom movie with The Rock and Carl Urban so many times as a kid. I thought that shit was awesome. I go back and watch it now and I'm like, whew, the whole plot of that movie was that they discovered a, that you could add a 25th chromosome to somebody and it makes them either a monster or a superhuman. Which, if you know how chromosomes work in real life, that's not how that works at all. <laughs> that's not how that works at all. And it's actually kind of hilarious that they ever got away with that. But we've come a long way since the days of, Do- of Doom. And, uh, yeah, I, I completely disagree. I think, we are, I think we're getting to the golden age where some of these, some of these adaptations are, are even transcending the original media. Um, or the original source material. Oh, okay, which ones? Arcane. Arcane. Great example dude, right dude, there. Th- that is, that okay, is based okay, off of a yes. game. Listen, listen, listen. One. No, no, no. Wait, you got that's one. A, you got that's, one. Okay, that is what based, else? That's keep based going, off a well, game. I'm sorry. You said something. You said something. But here, here's, a contra- here's a contrary opinion because, like, I have a differing opinion than Gage on what Edge would Runners. make a great video game adaptation. Uh, you know, everyone probably has a different interpretation of what that actually means. Like, I don't think that me thinking about what my favorite video game adaptation is, is going to be like, you know, beating Breaking Bad or fucking Better Call Saul as one of my favorite TV shows of all time. But I think it; those shows are my you know top tier video game adaptations like and there's the the things that are exciting to me are the things that take whatever source material you have and expand and make it better like gage is saying like arcane and from all the previews that have come out about fallout which i'm very interested to watch apparently what they do with the fallout series is expand that quite a bit and you kind of get a different glimpse of that universe which is a lot more interesting to me than just watching the same thing over again which was one of my biggest issues with the last of us series which is very good in terms of it's one-to-one representation i think but not necessarily expanding or you know bringing new things into it are you not conflating personal entertainment and personal definitions of adaptation to the claim of golden age, though? Like, that carries weight. Well, like, the, also, golden age, the golden age of TV, everyone was watching fucking Seinfeld and Friends. Everybody in the, in like, outside these walls were talking about sitcoms. That, Did you catch last night's XYZ? Are people saying that about video game adaptations? I will actually walk this back a little bit. That did happen with The Last of Us, where people who don't play video games were talking to me about this HBO series, right. uh, like at the gym. That was that was a turning point. I will I will gladly rescind that and be like, oh, we are at a turning point. But are we in the current golden age? I don't think so yet. Not yet. Now, 
I, I see what you I see what you're saying that that like yeah well we might be more in the golden age in like a few years but here's the thing is that th the reason I don't think that comparison works quite well is that you're talking about like TV viewers is a huge base so like the video oh, like it's, mean. right I video game mean. adaptations is that base of people like you know what I mean yeah you you get what I'm trying to say but uh... um uh. Yeah, The Last of Us is a great example of that. I also, I meant to bring up the the Rotten Tomatoes. I have like 18 tabs open for this, um, but I forgot. But Castlevania, another show I didn't watch, oh. but apparently was transcended oh, sure. and, did, and did actually, what we're talking about, expand on the source material and not just bring it. Um, and then I also would, my main pushback is that I would say that The Last of Us is, again, like I think personal bias of playing the game might be getting in the way because like when you look at what a good adaptation is, I think The Last of Us is a good adaptation. I don't like it as much as the video game because I love the video game, but if I were to be like, what's a good adaptation? Like, I mean, it kind of checks all the boxes. If you hadn't watched, or sorry, if you hadn't played the game, those scenes that didn't hit for us, that wouldn't even be in your purview, right? Like there's certain, like obviously what happens with Tess and at the very end of the game or at the very end of the show versus its video game counterparts kind of lackluster, but it's only lackluster because we ah, okay. participated in that original telling. So, so bad adaptation of the story, good adaptation of the game at large. Yes. And my, yeah, I think I would agree. I think I would, I would walk that back and be like, okay, then I actually agree. Right. My, my other contrary and opinion as well is that, I don't necessarily think that, you know, looking to the future and thinking that, you know, 10 years from now might be an even better time to say is the golden age. I don't necessarily think that that should take right. away from us thinking now is like, you know, if in 10 years we think differently, then that makes sense because like we've seen 10 more years of video game adaptations at that point. Like, you know, people in the 40s or 50s or 60s, I'm sure, there were people in that those eras that were saying this is the you know golden this age is the best it's gonna of, get right yeah so like it definitely like uh. as time goes on i think that that changes of course yeah it's almost like yeah. when you're when you're increasing in quality you can't quite ever stop and call it you can only sort of after there's been a decrease and kind of look back and say okay this is when the golden age started this is when the golden age ended because the last few years things have gotten worse but when you're on the climb upwards you can't really stop and declare yeah. now is sure. the end yeah. and now is the start because you're in the middle of it you're on the upswing right this, you're in the middle of the numbers go up phase yeah so this would be this would be like me in 2011 being like no we're not in the comic book golden age of movies what are you kidding me but then you look <laughs> right. back you look back and i'm like oh holy shit like that was the beginning of the mcu and right, the avengers sure. changed everything like that was the beginning of the golden age and the beginning of the golden age i think that, i think this is what daniel and i are kind of like maybe aligning on it, it, it subliminally is that like the beginning of the golden age still counts as the golden age i think it's it kind of it's, yeah right is kind of what i'm getting at um also another <laughs> i actually got to bring it up only because i was pleasantly surprised by it gran turismo gran turismo was great hey i enjoyed that one too yeah that's a good one was that a good adaptation uh for a game that doesn't really have a story i thought they did a pretty interesting job with well, it interesting are they hold on are they adapting the game or are they adapting the <laughs> real world story that's interesting is it even a video game adaptation or is this a biopic based it's a biopic. around yes. yeah no, yeah yeah that's that's interesting that's kind of a fun little gray area yeah is that what our, our well i guess it's not a real story but like it's an original story but it happened this you're telling me that's what no, it's, it's, a, yeah. mm -hmm. it's a it's based on a true story that's the colon. That's the the subtitle, of course. Yeah. <laughs> From Game Eraser. Do you go first person to to drive in this movie? Hey, they have first person scenes where like no, no, they don't. They have scenes where the character like it goes from a race car to like the video game world because he's like in the zone. It doesn't look very good, but it's it doesn't look very good. <laughs> and it sounds bad, but it was actually pretty well executed. It was like I was surprised. Um. Also, it, it very surprisingly faithful retelling of the real story too i didn't realize how accurate it was going to be but um and then yeah to, to get back to things so i mean obviously the witcher which is witcher. is mixed yeah. now but i thought the first season was very strong i thought that was a really interesting uh i, I would say that they kind of expanded on the source but, you, but then you can kind of get into the nitty-gritty is it a book adaptation is it a video game adaptation right. um but i mean i don't think if the video games never existed i don't think it would have been getting a witcher series of this of this prominence because the witcher games kind of 
in terms of momentum, like property momentum, contributed a lot to The Witcher. Like those 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 novels came out in like the nineties, I think, right? Like those are old novels. I don't know if there's a hankering for a, a show with Geralt or not with, with Geralt. What's his name? Henry Cavill as its lead. Um. Yeah, but I would say that the first season of The Witcher definitely took its source material and transcended it. Like that was a really cool way they used time, and not telling the 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 viewer when certain scenes take place, and you kind of have to throw it together yourself. I thought that was pretty cool. I'll say this much: barring the Mario movie, I do think the animated adaptations are uh, uh, more personally enjoyable to me than than the live action stuff. For sure. I think I think Arcane is the easiest example you could point to of something that transcends the media because the source material is literally just you punch their crystal faster than they punch <laughs> your crystal, and that's it. So then to get a show like this, that's almost like a modern Shakespearean tale, you're like, where did where did this come from? How did how did this happen? So that's obviously an easy one. I've heard I've heard the same said about Edge Runners. Like I said, I haven't watched it. I know that you guys have, so you guys, you speak to that. But yeah, I think we're here. I think we're in it. And I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I think it's the next few years might look better. But as we said earlier, I think the start hey. of the golden age is the golden age, baby. I think we're here. You know what? I'm going to instead of walk like everything. We're getting the Among Us show. Of course, we're in the golden age. <laughs> <laughs> How could I be so wrong? How could you be so wrong? No, that was that was really a great discussion. I That was very good. I think there's a lot of good points all around there like it's a lot deeper of a conversation that people really think about and there's a lot more perspectives to think about so that's why i i like that we don't just all agree because there's a lot of different perspectives and i feel like that sure. that doesn't happen enough in general for a lot of things not just obviously this like there's different perspectives different you know ways to see things speaking of ways to see things are we gonna are we gonna sit down and see alone in the dark at 250 together God. starring the starring movie. christian slater jesus one percent dude that's crazy awful awful remember assassin's creed with michael fassbender no i never I said that earlier it. yeah i said that, i said that after, after you said uh prince of persia I, oh right okay my bad i love assassin's creed never watched that movie I said no. You fuck, should. Fuck well, on, they were at two fifty. No, no. Two fifty. Not happening. Twelve weeks away from two fifty, guys. Exciting. Stay tuned. Also, oh, three months, huh? Yeah. Stay tuned for that. We still got to solidify a get, date for the audience at some point. You guys, you guys ever watched the Donkey Kong movie? The like three D animated. I used to, I used to like it. It's not very good. I don't think no, I've seen it. I don't think I saw it. Nope. Interesting. I want you to think about that, viewers, as you go to sleep tonight. Thank you to everyone joining us live on YouTube and Twitch, as well as podcast services everywhere, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcast. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Gage. Thank you, Christian. I am Daniel. I messed up that order and it really screwed my brain up. I am Daniel and this has been Podcast PXN and we are out. Much love and keep on gaming. See ya. I am Daniel. That's awesome. <laughs> Adios.